Hi folks, welcome to another episode of The Art of Engineering. My life circumstances have changed remarkably in the last few weeks. I've gone from part-time teacher to full-time teacher across two different areas of education, so I'm gonna be a very busy person, so my priorities are gonna obviously have to be on the day job. Don't you worry, I will still be trying to upload as often as I can, probably not weekly, Maybe it's going to go to every couple of weeks and the videos might be a little bit shorter, but for people that like shorter videos, that might be a good thing and that might be a good thing for the channel. Time will tell. Today's project is going to be another Drew Diamond VK3 XU Classic design. And we're going to be building a sensitive field strength indicator. So basically it's a device that uh, in the old days, before we had antenna modeling where we could just chuck our antenna into a computer program and see how it behaves, people would have to actually make their own polar diagrams and field strength diagrams using a device like the one we're about to build. And you would walk around the antenna and do a plot to see where gain is happening and everything else. Now, this could be a really, really handy device to actually check to see whether your antenna modeling is actually correct. A lot of the time it is, but it's not guaranteed to be. And also, if you were to add an element to a vertical antenna as a passive element to see if you could improve gain, you could actually visually have a look and see with your own device whether those modifications to the antenna actually improve the gain. So there's a lot of things you can do with this device. Um, it can also be used as an RF sniffer if you put uh, different attachments on it, etc, etc, etc. So without further ado, let's get on with the construction of this fun Project. Okay, we're back on the bench and these are the things you're going to need to build your sensitive field strength indicator. You're going to need Drew Diamond's Radio Projects for the Amateur, Volume 2. You're going to need a piece of one-sided or double-sided circuit board, really one side's enough. And this is what you're going to build on. You're going to build it Manhattan style or ugly style. You've got a couple of pots. You're going to need a 9 volt battery holder. You're going to need your LM386 IC, which is an amplifier IC. You're going to need a couple of capacitors, a couple more uh, little ceramic uh, coupling capacitors, and uh, a couple of resistors. The main thing you're going to need, of course, is one of these panel meters. And when you get your panel meter out of the box, please make sure that you don't just immediately throw the box away because the meter actually sits inside a piece of cardboard. And you can use this cardboard as a template when you have to cut out your case. Now, the case I am using is all metal. It cost me about $11. And I was going to put a uh, transmitter in this, but I thought, gee, this would be nice to put the uh, field strength meter in. So the meter will sit on the front here and uh, the antenna will come out the top and it's going to be awesome. So that's it. All the parts we need for our project. Please don't let the batteries be flat like they always are. We'll get rid of the burrs on the inside of the case now. Will be slightly larger or a very much larger drill bit. As you can see on the inside there, um, when you drill, you usually get these like large burrs. So if we sit our larger drill bit in there, it uh, just knocks those burrs off. And uh, this makes it easier to uh, install our meter. For the near enough is good enough home brewer, this tool is a godsend. It is called the nibbling tool and as the name implies, you stick that little head that you can see there through the hole and go nibble, nibble, nibble and you nibble out the hole you need. Now, as long as the panel that's going on the outside of the hole is larger than the hole, the hole can be rough. If you're a purist, a uh, perfectionist, you can always file the edges and what whatnot. But uh, for me, as you all well know from watching our previous projects, near enough is always good enough. We just need to drill a hole that's big enough to, uh, to get our nibbler inside.
Getting there. Yippee ki yay. Uh, now we've managed to uh, to get that meter in. Rough as guts at the back, but like I said, if I don't see it, I don't worry about it. So this is a zeroing and sensitivity, and as luck would have it, it all fits nicely. We'll put our uh, BNC on the top here. Probably our on-off switch at the top as well. Or maybe this top corner here, I'm not sure yet. I'll think about that. And uh, then we just need to ugly build and wire it up and we'll have this. So, quick project. Now, if you want to keep homebrewing alive and you want to see more projects like this and more stuff happening on the channel, all I need is a little bit of encouragement. So please reach down, hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and please drop me a comment to let me know what you think of the videos, what you might like to see in future videos, all of that good stuff. Anyway, let's get back to the home brewing. Now we're going ugly style because that's my favorite way of building. It's nice and organic. And we've got a couple of little pads that I had pretty cut. They probably should give this board a really good sand. Um, but yeah, a bit lazy. Well, we've managed to make it to another weekend and the ugly build continues on this uh, device. And I might just take you over to the board and uh, quickly tell you a little bit about this circuit and how simple it is. This is the sensitive field strength indicator that I'm building. And it's from Radio Projects for the uh, Amateur, volume two, page 84. And uh, Drew Diamond has written that beautiful book. Now, I have done a great review of that series of four books and it's in the uh, description below and also in the hand playlist. Fantastic um, set of books, um, not just for the designs, but also um, for lots of things you can learn about home brewing. Um, that's our input through a capacitor. We have two diodes here, another capacitor. We have our sensitivity control here, which is a potentiometer. And then we feed into this LM386 amplifier. That is our meter, a panel meter. And we've got the, uh, the zero adjustment here, all running off a nine volt battery through a switch. Now it's obvious how simple this circuit is. And you're probably thinking, where are the component values? Unfortunately, I don't own this circuit. It belongs to Drew Diamond. It's from his book. And if I was to just start giving you uh, circuits out of that book, I would be doing him a huge disservice. And also you a huge disservice because these books are definitely worth owning. So all I'm going to say is, that is the circuit. It's really simple. Go and buy the book. I will put a link in the description below where those books are available as well. Let's head off back to the bench and complete this design. Now, I almost forgot to mention, since buying these wonderful books, I have actually built projects as well. And a couple of the pieces of equipment in my shack are the direct result of Drew Diamond's books. Now, one of those things is the linear power supply, which I'm very, very proud of. I rewound microwave transformers. And because if you use only one transformer, you get a lot of magnetizing current. The thing runs very, very hot. All the designs that I saw, people were saying, don't do it. Transformers run hot. They're not, they're not designed for such a purpose, et cetera, et cetera. I actually found out you could lower that magnetizing current by putting two in series, which is something that Drew Diamond's done for high tension, type uh, transformers for valve equipment. So what I did was, well, I thought, well, hey, why not do that for a, a, a lower voltage? And it's not something that he recommends and it's completely experimental on my part, but uh, I built a 13.8 volt uh, DC linear supply and I put it in an old PC case, rewound these microwave transformers. So there's videos below on all the experimenting that I did with those transformers, had a heap of fun doing it and ended up with a really fantastic uh, DC power supply. In fact, I'm going to show it to you right now because uh, why not? If you haven't seen it, here's the chance now. So there it is. I built its, uh, its own little shelf for it to live on and I 
if we scoot up here, you can see uh, that it is running any QRP rig that I put along here. And it runs my uh, little uh, QDX from QRP Labs for FD8. I also used Drew's books for this uh, project, which was I had a switch mode supply that uh, I was very, very noisy. So what I did was I looked up how to, to um, quieten these supplies and Drew Diamond had a design for a, uh, this is a common mode filter that feeds the supply and this is uh, filtering all the, uh, the DC and whatnot. So, and it worked very, very well, um, cut out most of the noise, but uh, I just had this compulsion to build a good old fashioned linear supply, a lot less noise. And this now lives on the test bench as my test supply when I'm testing rigs on the test bench. Uh, we are very, very fast approaching a finished project. I put some uh, coaxial cable in here to connect up to the board. The actual project calls for a number of different types of antennas, depending on the application, whether you're sniffing an RF oscillator or looking at an antenna. Uh, I'm eventually going to get onto um, building a variety of these antennas. What I've done is I've grabbed a small piece of coax plan to strip most of the uh, braid off and leave the center conductor and just to make this nice and vertical probably going to grab a chopstick or something and uh, cable tie it to this to keep it nice and vertical. Please pardon the uh, hand filming. We have got our thing in the enclosure and normally I test it on the bench. I haven't done that. It's a really simple circuit so we have, well, fingers crossed we don't release any smoke. Let's go. Well, that's a, uh, a nice sign. The meter is actually coming up. Now, let's see if the zero works. And it's a zero in the meter, which is a nice start. We've uh, dialed up a simplex frequency on our Puxing handheld. It's a 70 centimeter handheld. And let's just key it and see if it does anything. Well, there you go. It is working. Now... <coughs> It's presumably if we wind our sensitivity up yes it's definitely working wind it back again still too sensitive wind it back again and there you have it folks as we get closer it gets more sensitive you can see there and you can see that if I tilt the antenna this way it goes down and as the polarization matches that of the field uh, meter, it comes up. So, happy days, it is working. So, we're going to get uh, this thing labeled and make it a little bit snazzier and uh, take it outside tomorrow because it's the middle of the night here in the dark. And uh, we'll have a play with it with an HF antenna and hopefully it'll uh, be able to detect that now. What I'll probably do is I will get a BNC, one of those BNC connectors with a banana plugs on the end and make a loop for this so that uh, if I'm testing for a field strength, polarity is not going to be so much of a concern. But this was just to get me, uh, get me on the air. And uh, I'm a happy chappy. This is a field strength test on my QDX Digimodes transceiver from QRP Labs using the vertical L antenna. And uh, it'll need a bigger loop to work successfully, but uh, proof of concept. Thank you for sticking around right to the end of the video. What is the verdict on our good friend here, the field strength meter? Well, it's working fine. It does need a larger antenna, and uh, this is obviously polarization sensitive, because if your antenna is vertical, the antenna has to be vertical in respect to it. And so I'm going to make a larger uh, loop to put on this, and then it will be a very handy piece of kit to have in the field to do real-time checks on field strength, uh, not just base it on what's happening with uh, the antenna modeling. And I can also use it to sniff out circuits I'm building 
as a quick way of checking to see if an oscillator is oscillating, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's a fun project. I'm happy I built it. Pretty old school, but I still think very, very useful thing to have around the shack. 73, and I will see you in the next episode of The Art of Engineering.